Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Chapter 5 Economics Notes. Today, we're going to be talking about Section 3. Section 3 specifically is what can cause demand to change. So let's go right here into it. And Section 3 is all about looking at graphs and real life examples of what can cause demand to change. So first of all, we have a graphing system where we have a demand curve that shows how much demand there is for a given product or service at different prices, okay? That line is the constant, okay? If, if nothing changes in the world, that line is what the demand is at. But we all know that things change constantly. And there are six demand shifters or factors that economists have determined are the most likely to influence a change in demand. So let's get into those. First, demand shifter is called changes in income. And this one's probably the most simple, straightforward. If you make more money, you get a promotion, you get a raise, whatever it might be, new job that makes more money. You have more money, so you're going to be buying more things. You have more demand for goods and services. If you look right here, more money equals more demand for goods and services. Likewise, if you lose your job or you take a job that you like better, but it pays less, or you are temporarily laid off, less money equals less demand for goods and services. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, demand curves. One thing I did not explain yesterday, uh, demand curves are always going to be going in this general direction from the top left to the bottom right. Now, if there is a increase in demand, so this would be example A, where you have more money, the line will shift this way. The curve, we call it a curve here because typically it's not a straight line like this in the real world, but for this example, it's a straight line. Um, the curve does not actually change. You know, it's not, it's not going to be looping out like this or anything like that. But the whole curve shifted to the right. That is an increase in demand. If we have less money, then the whole curve shifts to the left. Okay, so that is a change in income. The second demand shifter is changes in the number of consumers. So this one, we're not talking about suddenly there's a nuclear bomb and there's a million less people in the world. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about events or things that can cause less consumers to be physically around. Now with the internet and buying things on the internet, this one is less common of a problem, um, but, but right now is actually a perfect example of how this particular demand shifter is causing a serious change in demand that is affecting our economy significantly. Right now, with what's going on with COVID-19, it is causing less people to be out and about, and therefore there is less demand at all sorts of stores. Um, the governor, of course, in Minnesota, ordered that all restaurants and bars would be closed um, to dining in. So we can't go, but let's just say the governor never did that. But instead the governor said, you know what, with this crisis that's going on, we do not want people to be going out and uh, sitting at bars. We're not gonna tell you you can't, but we don't want you to because you might spread um, this virus around. So <clears throat> the demand would naturally go down because there are gonna be a lot of people who are gonna say, oh, we shouldn't go out because it might spread the virus. So you're gonna see a shift this way. The demand goes down, meaning that if the price were to stay the same, less people are going to buy it, okay? Um, so in order to get more people to buy whatever your thing is, you have to lower the price if you're the business owner, okay? Um, the opposite of this, where, where it shifts to the right, where there's an increase in demand, might be a situation where we have a street fair, okay? I don't know if anybody's ever been to the Fargo Street Fair, it's like a week long. They shut down downtown Fargo for traffic. 
And there are businesses set up all over the place and tents like in this picture here. And naturally, you just have much more foot traffic in the area, which means that there's going to be much more demand because you're going to have people that would normally never be in front of your store buying things that they think they need right now, where if they weren't walking in front of it, they might never have even thought of. The third demand shifter is changes in consumer tastes and preferences. So this one um, is talking about how we as people naturally start to have different things that we like, different services. Um, a good example is 30 years ago, very few Americans ate sushi. Almost nobody in America ate sushi unless you had a connection to Japan somehow. Now you can find it just about everywhere. I saw one time sushi in a gas station, which don't ever trust that. Don't eat that. That's scary. Um, and another good example um, would be how there has been a change in consumer taste and preferences in how we buy things. Okay. People like to buy things online now rather than going to stores. So that shows a change in demand for the way that we buy things, not necessarily what we buy, right? I still buy my pants in a store usually, but if I find a pair of pants that I like the next time that I want to buy them, I'm not going to buy them in store. I'll just order them online and it'll show up at my house and it'll save me tons of time. Another big thing that influences our taste and preferences is advertising. People will have a very positive or negative reaction to advertising. Generally, if you see a product that maybe you knew about, but you didn't know a lot about it, and you see a celebrity, somebody who you respect, supporting that product in an advertisement, the demand is naturally going to go up. It might not for you individually, but as a whole, it's definitely going to go up. So changes in consumer tastes and preferences has a lot to do with demand shifting. Because as you know, fads change constantly, right? When I was in high school, the, the low-waisted, almost bell-bottom-like jeans were kind of the thing. Okay. Then by the time that you guys were in like middle school, early high school, skinny jeans was all the rage. And now it's starting to flow back towards that, the bell bottom looking type of jeans. You know, it's just changes in consumer tastes. People change what they like based off of what their friends and family and celebrities and all sorts of other stuff. So it causes a change in demand for different products. Fourth, Changes in consumer expectations. This one is one of the hardest ones to explain. So the best way I can do it is by looking at the example of Black Friday. If you expect the price of something to go down in the future, like Black Friday, your demand for that product right now will go down. Not in the future. In the future, your demand will go up. But right now, you expect, you know, if I wait for two months, let's say that it's September and you know Black Friday is coming in November, two months from now, the price is going to go down. So I'm just gonna wait, okay? That causes a decrease in demand right now. Or the, the flip example would be, you think that the price of something is going to go up soon. So your demand right now increases. A good example of this is right now too, when you see people going out and buying up tons of toilet paper and, and food and all this other stuff, they're predicting that this crisis will cause them to be shut up in their homes for a long time. So the demand went up right now and they are expecting that it won't be available to them in the future. It has very little to do with price in this case. It has to do with availability. So the demand goes up like crazy. And then when people started to realize that government isn't going to shut down grocery stores, they went, oh, we don't have to panic. We can wait and we'll find out that prices generally stayed the same and demand came back down to normal. All right. The fifth demand shifter is 
changes in the price of substitute goods. And I talked about this a little bit in section two. A substitute good is something that can replace something else. The best examples of this usually are in food, okay? If the price of chicken suddenly goes up, maybe there's some sort of um, disease that is killing off chickens like crazy. So there's the availability of chickens is just not there anymore. So the price of chicken goes up. The demand for fish might go up with it, okay? Because nobody wants to buy chicken for higher price. So instead they buy fish and fish is a substitute good. You can easily fry fish just as well as you can fry chicken. May not taste the same, but it's, you know, it's a replacement. The final demand shifter is changes in the price of complementary goods. Complementary goods are products that go together, like cars and gasoline, peanut butter and jelly, okay? Hot dogs and hot dog buns. If the demand for one of those things goes up, the demand for the other one will also go up. So if the demand for cars goes up, let's say that all of a sudden it becomes much cheaper to produce cars, more people can buy cars, well, the demand for gas will go up too. Um, or vice versa, let's say that gas is not available. Maybe there's some sort of an oil crisis and gas prices go way up and people are like, well, I don't so much want to drive as much as I have been. So people won't be buying new cars anymore. And if they do, they're gonna be buying fuel efficient cars rather than SUVs and big trucks that don't get good gas mileage. Similarly with peanut butter and jelly or um, tennis rackets and tennis balls, you know, if the demand for one of those things goes up, the complementary good, the thing that goes well with it, the demand for that will go up as well. So this has been our notes for section three. If you have any questions, hop in during my office hours or just send me an email and I will help you as best I can. Have a good rest of your day.